Let's practice factoring some special case polynomials together. If you're looking for some extra practice on factoring other types of polynomials besides these special case ones, then please check out some of my other videos. And remember, you can always go ahead and check out the description of this video and download the PDFs for each of these as well. Let's jump right into it. For number one, we have this x squared minus 25. Now, if you remember from a previous video, we have two types of special cases. There's difference of squares and there's perfect square trinomials. And so this is an example of a difference of squares. So we do have a difference because we're subtracting and we have to check, are these perfect squares? Well, the square root of x squared, that does come out nicely to x and the square root of 25 does come out nicely to five. So when you factor difference of squares patterns and you have a difference of literally perfect squares, it always factors into two binomials. One is going to be the sum of their square roots and one is going to be the difference of their square roots. And this would be the factored form. That's why it's a special case. It's very uh, straightforward to do if you notice the pattern. And if you wanted to go ahead and check this to see if it works, you could distribute this would be x squared minus 5x plus 5x, so they cancel each other out in the middle, and then minus 25, so you'd be left with this x squared minus 25. Alrighty, so it does work. I'm just go ahead and showing you if you want to check it yourself. All right. For number two, we have this 4x squared minus 49. And so if we look at this one, again, it's not going to be a perfect square trinomial. It's definitely got two terms here. It could be a difference of squares, right? Because there's a subtraction sign. And if you want to check this, this better be a perfect square. So the square root of four is two and the square root of x squared is x. And let's make sure 49 is a perfect square. The square root of 49 is seven, seven times seven is 49. So if you know that they are both squares and we know that there is a subtraction sign between them, this will factor into two x minus seven multiplied by the quantity of two x plus seven. It doesn't matter which one you write first, the one with the plus or the minus, they're both okay. Now, if we go ahead to number three, number three is gonna be a little bit different. Notice that we do not have a difference of squares pattern. Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and write it down. We have y squared plus 12y plus 36. Okay, so this is probably gonna be one of those perfect square trinomials, but let me help you identify that it is a special case in the future. Um, so you can tell the difference between this and just other trinomials. The first term's gotta be a perfect square, which it is, the square root of y squared is y. And the last term has to be a perfect square. So the square root of 36 is just going to be six. And if you go ahead and multiply these two together, this y and this six together, multiply six and y, you do get six y. And then if you go ahead and double that, right? Multiply that by two. Then if you get the middle term, which is this 12 y in the middle, then you know that this is a perfect square trinomial. So if that's the case, we know that this one does work because doubling six y is 12 y. So we can go ahead and factor this into y plus six multiplied by the quantity y plus six. Okay. And you can also go ahead and write this a uh, little bit more shorthand using exponents. We can write y plus six squared. So indeed this trinomial is a perfect square because it has two uh, binomials that are exactly identical. Let's see, for number four, we have this y squared plus 20y plus 100. Okay, so we have another perfect square trinomial on our hands uh, just because we know it's not difference of squares. And so we can double check though, just identify. So the square root of this is just going to be y and the square root of 100 is going to be 10. Okay, so that checks out. Those have to be uh, perfect squares. If you go ahead and multiply the y and the 10 together, you do get 10y. And the question is, if you double it, do you get the middle term? So if you double 10y, do you get this 20y in the middle? And we do, 10y times two is 20y. So we can go ahead and factor this into the sum of y plus 10 multiplied by the sum of y plus 10. Now, if they're identical, remember you can also write it this way. So you may see this written in this shorthand notation using exponents as well. For number five, let's see, uh, we have 49x squared. Let's go ahead and write this down, 49x squared minus 100. So notice right away, again, this has to have a subtraction sign if it's gonna be a difference of squares. So again, it's important to identify if these are perfect squares. So this, the square root does come out to being a nice seven X and the square root for this 100 is 10, right? So this does uh, represent a difference of squares and the two binomials are going to be seven X plus 10 and seven X minus 10. That's the factored form here, all right? For number six, we have this y squared minus 81. 
Again, this is not a perfect square trinomial. It is a difference of squares. The square root of y squared is y, and the square root of 81 is 9. So we can go ahead and factor this into uh, y minus 9 multiplied by y plus 9. Again, it doesn't matter which if you put the uh, minus or the plus first, it's totally up to you. For number 7, let's see what we have here. We have the 16y squared minus 9. Okay, so we have a difference of squares, once again, and the square root of the 16y squared is going to be 4y, and the square root of this 9 is going to be 3. So now that we know that they are a difference of perfect squares, we can factor this into the quantity of 4y plus 3 multiplied by 4y minus 3. That's it. Okay, uh, if we look at number 8, Number eight, we have this 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. Okay, so this is a perfect square trinomial. We can identify again this perfect square. The square root is going to be 2x. For 25, that's going to be 5. If we go ahead and, and find the product or multiply them together, that's going to be 10x. And if we go ahead and multiply that 10x by 2 or double it, then we do end up getting this 20x up here. So that does check out. So uh, I'm going to head, go ahead and write just the uh, simplified version of this. And so it's going to be 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 5 or just 2x plus 5 squared. So if you want to look back at the previous ones to write it out expanded, that's fine. But I'm just going to write it using the exponent here just so you get used to it. Let's check out number 9. For number 9, we have this uh, 9y squared minus 48y plus 64. Okay, so if we go ahead and try to look for square roots, uh, the square root of this 9y squared is going to be 3y, and the square root of 64 is going to be 8. Now you do want to be careful for these uh, types of problems where you do see a subtraction sign over here, um, just because when you are dealing with this, you're going to have to remember that this 8 doesn't have to be an 8, it could be a negative 8 as well, and it needs to be in this particular case, just because negative 8 times negative 8 is still 64, but we're going to need two negative terms to add to the negative 48y. Now if you find the product of these two, 3y times negative 8, that's going to be negative 24y. And if you go ahead and double negative 24y, you do indeed get this negative 48y. So this is a perfect square trinomial. And what we can do in factor this is going to be the binomial of 3y minus 8 squared. Okay, there's going to be two of the same here. Remember, difference of squares has 1 plus 1 minus, and then perfect square trinomials has two that are exactly the same binomials. For number 10, we have this uh, 49x squared minus 100. So looking here, we do have a difference. Again, this won't work for sum, so be careful if you see a plus sign there. We can't really factor a difference of squares that way. The square root of this is going to be 7x. That's nice. The square root of this is going to be 10. So this is a difference of squares. So let's go ahead and just write two binomials of 7x plus 10 and 7x minus 10. All right, that's it. Okay. So when you know these special cases, they go quite quickly. Let's check out number 11. For 11, we have this 49y squared, 49y squared minus 56y plus 16. Okay, so it's not a difference of squares. Could be a perfect square trinomial. Let's see what we got going on here. Take the square root, that's gonna be 7y. Take the square root of this. We're gonna use a negative four just because we notice there is a negative sign in the middle b term, okay? If we just go ahead and double check, Multiplying these together, that's going to be negative 28y. And if we double negative 28, we do get negative 56. So that all checks out. So we are going to factor this into 7y minus 4 squared. That's it. Okay. Perfect square trinomial. For number 12, we have x squared minus 18x plus 81. Alrighty. And so this is probably a perfect square trinomial. So the square root of that is going to be x. The square root of 81 is going to be 9. But let's use a negative 9 just because we see this minus sign over here. And we can go ahead and check not, uh, this 1x times negative 9 is going to be negative 9x. And if we go ahead and double negative 9x, that would be this negative 18x in the middle. So we can go ahead and say this is a perfect square trinomial. And we should have two of the same binomials of x minus 9 squared. For 13, 
Now for number 13, this one's a little different because you might notice the exponent is higher. It's x to the fourth power. But remember, anything raised to an even exponent is a perfect square. So uh, there's a difference of squares here. And so the square root of x to the fourth power is just x squared. And the square root of 25 is going to be 5. Alrighty, so they are a difference of squares. And so we're going to have the sum of these square roots, x squared plus 5 in the first binomial. And then we're going to have a difference of their square roots, x squared minus 5. So that would be the factored form. Now 14 looks very similar to 13, but there's going to be a little twist here. So be careful. So we have y to the fourth power minus 81. Okay, so let's see, it is a difference. And it looks like we have an even exponent on the y. So the square root of that is y squared. And the square root of 81 is 9. So this is a difference of squares. So we can go ahead and factor this into writing y squared plus 9 for the first binomial and then writing y squared minus 9 for the second binomial. Now, if you look back to number 13, this x squared plus 5 cannot be factored as a difference of squares because, well, it's a sum and 5 is not a perfect square. This one can't be factored either just because it is a difference, but 5 again is not a perfect square. This y squared plus 9 can't be factored because it's a sum of squares. But if you look at this y squared minus 9, this is actually another difference of squares. So we're actually going to want to go one step further and then factor this, right? So what we can factor that into is we're going to keep this y squared plus 9 in the beginning. And then afterwards, this y squared minus 9 is going to factor into this y plus 3 and then y minus 3. All right, so just be careful because if you're factoring these things with higher exponents like this y to the fourth power, when you factor them, you actually get these ter uh, terms here that have y squareds, which could then be factored again. It's possible. So be on the lookout for that. For number 15, let's see what we got here. We have 98. This one's interesting. So it's, this one has a little twist to it. 98x squared minus 50. Okay. So right away, it's not a perfect square trinomial, but it could be a difference of squares. The only problem is, is this uh, 98 is not a perfect square and 50 is also not a perfect square. So uh, this is not a perfect square trinomial and it's not a difference of squares. But another thing you want to think about, one of your strategies is factoring and just pulling out a GCF or the greatest common factor, right? So a little throwback. But if you look at this, then you can identify and say, hmm, they're both even numbers, right? So if we factor out a two, let's go ahead and do that together. We factor out a two, then half of 98 is actually 49 X squared. And then half of this 50 is going to be 25. So minus 25. And so this should look pretty interesting to you because this 49 X squared is a perfect squared. The square root is seven X and the square root of 25 is going to be five. So this actually is a difference of squares. So after we factored out that two in the beginning, right, we can now factor the rest of it into saying it's going to be seven X plus five multiplied by seven X minus five. So sometimes these patterns are hidden, right? And so it, it wasn't a perfect square trinomial and difference of squares, uh, but it could have been a difference of squares just because we had a difference. And if you factor out GCF, sometimes you can find these special case polynomials that are hidden in there and you can factor them using this pattern. So for number 16, this one's pretty interesting. These numbers are, are pretty big. So we have 200y to the fourth power plus 80y cubed plus 8y squared. Okay, so it's definitely not a difference of squares, but is it a perfect square trinomial? Well, it is a trinomial, but 200 is not a perfect square and 8 is not a perfect square. So the first and the last term aren't, so it's not a perfect square trinomial. But maybe we can factor out a GCF. Um, I noticed that all three terms are divisible by 8, and they all seem to have y times y. They both have, all three of them have y squared inside of them. So 8y squared, I think, is the GCF. And if we factor that out, 8 times 25 is 200. So we have 25y squared plus, and I think we're going to have 10y here because 8 times 10 is 80 and y squared times y is y cubed. And then it looks like we're going to have a plus 1 at the very end here. All right. So if you go ahead and distribute, that's 200y to the fourth. That's going to be 80y cubed. And that right there is going to be 8y squared. OK. So now that we have factored out the GCF, maybe what we have inside the parentheses is a perfect square trinomial. So uh, the square root of that is 5y. The square root of 1 is just 1. If we go ahead and multiply 5y times 1, that is 5y. 
And if we double 5y, do we get this 10y? We do. So it does check out. And so when we factor this whole thing, I'm going to be running out of space here. So I'm going to write it down at the bottom. We have this 8y squared that we factored out as the GCF. And then we're going to have this 5y plus 1 times 5y plus 1, or just write 5y plus 1. The whole quantity is squared. So for 15 and 16, they were using the special case patterns, but they weren't clear at first. So uh, be on the lookout to maybe factor out GCFs so that you can see the hidden special cases inside. So there you have 16 different practice problems on factoring out these uh, special case polynomials where you have difference of squares and perfect square trinomials. So if you're looking to factor trinomials where the leading coefficient or a is one, or when you're factoring trinomials where a is greater than one, I have two separate videos on that, but this one was just focused on multiplying special case ones or factoring rather special case polynomial. So I really hope you found this video helpful in practicing your factoring of special cases. And as always, keep up the great work that you're already doing and I'll see you in the next one.